He's Peter Schrager, co-host NFL Network's Good Morning Football, which airs Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Eastern. NFL Network providing live coverage of the draft from Dallas. Fox will simulcast NFL Network's coverage rounds one, two, and three as we make way for Peter Schrager. Thanks for uh, coming up the block and joining us. Here, I Peter. love being here. I wanted to congratulate you guys. An Emmy nomination, Sports Emmy, Best Daily Show. Yeah. That's awesome stuff, man. Yeah, you guys got nominated before, uh, last year or the year before. Good morning, I football. Our first year we got nominated. We did not get nominated this year. Um, I have I have no answer for that. I guess we got worse. I love the show. Yeah. Uh, but, I, you know, the Emmys, the Emmy panel didn't, didn't feel the same. I was told that Kay Adams and some of the other people there uh, were blaming you. They, I, it might be my fault. Yeah. They like, do, they like do that. You were spending too much time wanting to be a sideline reporter and you pretty much mailed it in Monday through Friday. That's that's exactly right. Now, I'm paraphrasing what they told no, me. No, that's exactly right. Uh, it is funny, though. You start looking in the mirror and say, what could I have done better? And then you go through <laughs> and you're like, there's been 360 shows. I don't think there's really much you could have done better. Okay, the Danettes have a question here. Yeah. Mc, McLovin, your question for uh, for Peter is what? So, Peter, we're grinding over here about what to wear. You know, do we go tux? Do we go, you know, do I call up a designer? I mean, is anyone going to interview us on the red carpet and say, what are you wearing? Or do we just go suit? I go suit. I, I, I go suit, no tie. I think that's that's a mm. cool look. That's like, mm. I'm in, but I'm not fully in. And, you know, I, I've seen the jeans at the sports Emmys. I would go against it. You don't, you don't want to be the guy that some executive is there whispering, this guy wore jeans to the sports Emmys? You don't. I would go suit, no tie. Oh, they're going to be whispering, those guys got nominated? That's, that's that, exactly that, right. That, that's the whisper you're going that's to it. get. Yeah, Paulie. At what point in the proceedings is our category best daily show? Because we would like to go to a bar beforehand. What time do we have to enter the building to be there in case we're picked? Great question. The event is about 13 hours long. So you're probably in like the 11th to 12th hour. So you will sit through all of those best short news features, best long news feature. There's a lot of awards, and you guys will be towards the end. This is what I'm thinking, because I think uh, – Best studio host is maybe the second one awarded. So you get in early. I get disappointed early yep. when I don't win. And then I can text you guys to let you know when our category is up for best daily sports show. And then if you guys, and if I don't know if you can sneak one, know if they can sneak in beer. I don't know. It's a fancy event. Do you want to be the guy who's sneaking <laughs> in beer to a fancy event? If that's the case, yes. But okay. The votes are already in, right? I, I I'm going to guess, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we can't jeopardize this I'll year. I'll spoil it for everyone. Real sports wins everything. <laughs> e60 wins everything. And we're all terrible journalists because we're not in Baghdad doing a story about some kid with, you know, an, an issue who's playing golf and also playing soccer. I Jeremy Schaap just won another one. Or just won another one. Yeah. Aaron Cohen just won another writing award. <laughs> Tom <laughs> Rinaldi won it. it. Tom Rinaldi. Bob Lee yeah. won again. Great. Yeah. But Costas isn't. Up this year. Is he not? He wins every year, too. He does. That's so disappointing. We lost to PTI, which, you know, they showed PTI. a sample of their PTI. They did a sample of their show, and it was like, Sonny Listener, Muhammad Ali, and they're arguing. And I looked at Kyle Brandt, my co-host. We're like, yeah, I, sure. Like, I don't yeah, know. Never come up on our show. Like, we're losing to that dark debate. Fine. Uh, we came up with a new show. It's when you wake up in the middle of the night. Yes. And it's called Pardon the Urination. <laughs> And so I, I had this thought last night as I'm you know, going back to bed. It was from 1 to one fifteen, And I said, whose future would you rather have? This yeah. actually came to I me. I love this. Uh, you, I had uh, Mike Trout. Okay. I had, uh, who's my uh, guy Bryce from Harper. Bryce Harper Shohei or Shohei Otani? Ooh. Who, who's future? Right now, right if I'm now. signing up right now, right I'm taking now. Mike Trout. Proven thing. I know what I'm getting. MVP awards. I'm taking Mike Trout. Center field. Big position. Okay. Trout. But Otani... Is the unicorn too short? Too short a career okay. right now. Well, you, really? Bigger it, sample it, size. It's been a week. I mean, come on. We usually jump. We have our opinions established by then. All right. Where do you stand on? It's lying season, as I tell yes. this audience, that nobody wants to tell you the truth. What do you feel like you know is actual gospel right now? Baker Mayfield will be taken in those top five picks. Like everyone is saying, it's not going to happen. Like I've spoken to multiple teams, and the feeling is that Mayfield will go that high. I. Dan, I've gone through the history books. I went through it, and I really went back to like the 1970s. There has never been a quarterback under six foot one drafted in the top five of the. I, I, this guy's going to break the mold. Is he that good? Is that the issue? Does anyone want to raise their hand and say, "Hey, he got arrested less than two years ago"? Like, it, but teams are falling in love with this guy when they meet him in person. And I am not waving the Baker Mayfield flag because I think there's a reason. Would you take him in the top five? I. I would rather have Alan Darnold and Rosen, I think, 
because of just the history of guys who are built bigger and have that side. I know you, you can roll your eyes and say, well, look at Russell Wilson, third round pick. Look at Drew Brees, second round pick. I could give you Colt McCoy and Johnny Menzel and countless others. It doesn't, it's so rich for a guy who there's not a long history of quarterbacks taken that high. Most likely to be the bust out of the top five or these five quarterbacks. I don't know about bust. I think Josh Rosen could slip though. I, the stuff that you're hearing on all these other guys is football stuff. The stuff that you hear on Josh Rosen is, does he love the game? Is he going to be the first quarterback in the building? Is he going to be the last one to leave? Does he want it so bad? And a lot of that stuff, I just roll my eyes at because everyone says Josh Rosen comes from a very privileged background. If you guys don't know, his father's one of the top spinal surgeons in the world. All right. His, his mother's from the Wharton family, which is the University of Pennsylvania School of Business. <laughs> he doesn't have to play football. So people hold that against him and they're like, look, he's into other things. He talks about Elon Musk more than he does about football. Like, I don't know if that's my guy. Then again, if he doesn't need football, and he chooses to play football, and he's getting his butt kicked at UCLA, and he gets up every single... Isn't that the guy you kind of want, that this isn't everything? He's not all his eggs are in this basket. He's not this desperate kid. I kind of like his attitude. I kind of like his personality. And to a man, everyone will tell you, when you look at just pure throwing motion and the, the consistency, it is Josh Rosen over all of these yes, guys. Yes, that's true. Uh, I was talking to a former NFL scout who said last night, as you get closer, more and more people are going to fall in love with Rosen because of that pure... He is the best passer in, you know, Josh Allen's got the best arm. That doesn't mean anything if you can't use it correctly. And that Josh Rosen is the best pure passer and the football IQ. Those are things you do. You should fall in love with. It's almost like they're teams that are creating obstacles there that maybe they shouldn't. And then there was the report where, they, you know, Stephen A. Smith and I think Keyshawn Johnson said he would like to go to New York because of the Jewish community. And I said, did they do any research that he's actually That's... an atheist more than he is practicing Jew? And I've, I've followed up on that. It, Shaker Heights is one of the biggest Jewish communities in the country. It's in Cleveland. Like Cleveland that, would love Josh Rosen. Like this is not, and he never said that. So I would hate to have that out there that like Josh Rosen made that claim. That's a very irresponsible thing to put out there. I will say this. I spoke to an offensive coordinator this week who said it is like going to Baskin Robbins. There are 31 flavors and it's very rare that you're going to fall in love with more than one of these guys. So if you're the Jets at three and two quarterbacks go, are you settling on taking a quarterback if it's a third pick and it's the third guy on your board? Or are you convincing yourself that, no, no, we love this guy? Because GMs don't get two top five picks at quarterback. Basically, it's like this is your shot and you have to hit a home run. But, but it's Jetsian that they, they trade up, but they, they don't know who they're getting. That th so they're going to go, hey, we'll take Baker Mayfield. That has to be. Or Josh Rosen. That has to be it. They have to say we are so comfortable with the four of them that no matter who falls to us, we're going to be good riding with them because they are going to take a quarterback. They, Saquon Barkley gets to be sitting there, and he could be the next Barry Sanders. They're going to take a quarterback. He's Peter Schrager, NFL Network's Good Morning Football co-host and the reason why they didn't get nominated for a sports Emmy this year, who joins us. What do you think um, the Patriots do with those first-round draft picks? Such an interesting deal because it's the offseason where they let Solder leave, right? Deion Lewis leaves. Malcolm Butler leaves. They trade Cooks. So the cupboard's kind of bare. Amendola gone. And you're going to tell Tom Brady, hey, you threw for about 800 yards in the Super Bowl, and we lost. And we're getting rid of five of your weapons and maybe your best defensive back, but we're going to draft a quarterback in the first round. And there's talk that with the 23rd and 31, they package that and even move up further to get one of these guys. Yes. That is truly putting a line in the sand saying, this ain't about you, Tom. This is about the future, and this is a team before you. And if I'm Tom Brady, that's a tough pill to swallow. I, it's almost I'm more concerned about his reaction to if they do take a quarterback in the first round, which they very well might do, than who the quarterback is and how it fits in with Belichick. Like It could be Mason Rudolph, Lamar Jackson, Luke Falk, whoever. What's Brady's reaction that next morning when we didn't get an offensive tackle? We didn't take a pass rusher? You took my backup? I, I don't know. Give me the team that shakes up the draft. Buffalo to me is the most intriguing team because everyone else jumped out of the gates to get these free agent quarterbacks, whether it be Denver saying we're, we're, we're getting with Keenum, Cousins, Bradford, all these guys. Even the Jets were like almost panic mode. Bridgewater and McCown, give us something. They sat back, said who's left? AJ McCarron, all right, affordable deal, $8 million. Trade Cordy Glenn. The Buffalo Bills now have the 12th and the 22nd, not high enough to get one of the top four guys. It's just not. They're not going to be there. So that means they have to make some moves. And the connections are interesting because Dave Gettleman, the GM of the Giants, was Brandon Bean's boss, the GM of the Buffalo Bills when they were in Carolina together. They know each other very well. That's not a difficult phone call to make. It's what does it cost <laughs> to get from 12 to 2.
You think Buffalo? Because I think Buffalo is still the wild card here. That Buffalo could shake it up to move up because they're nervous. I think they want Josh Allen. Uh, but, you know, Sam Darnold's not a bad consolation prize. No, and they had Sam Darnold in for a meeting, I think, today. Sam Darnold's with them. Uh, Baker Mayfield could be very intriguing. Baker, I'm, I, I hate to hype up Baker Mayfield more than he needs to be hyped. He's being hyped everywhere. He's got a docu-series about him on right now, which is always needed. Um, but Baker, <laughs> Baker's beloved by these teams. He comes in, he had dinner with multiple teams, and I'm getting texts from teams being like, is this kid real? And I'm like, I don't know him. Like, everyone says he's amazing. Like, He's amazing on the board. He's amazing in the room. Yeah, but man, Johnny Manziel fooled that, everybody. That felt like an act, right? EJ Manuel. It's true. Loved. Everybody, everybody loved, loved him. Oh, great kid. He loved him. Yes. The Baker Mayfield love is real, though. And if he goes third overall to the Jets, I would not be surprised. Yeah. See, that, it, it, that I, I love this, but I hate this. Because there's so much misinformation out there. And then you feel like sometimes you're trying to clean up the messes. And, you know, somebody spilled something in aisle six. And then you got to go in and say, no, that's not what I'm hearing. That's not true. So there's so much misinformation here. Yeah. And let me explain to people, like, when you see some of these reports from the anonymous scouts, like, the stuff is out there. Like, a lot of times that stuff is real. It's just who has the power in the building. Like, it's one thing if your college, you know, personnel guy says, eh, we, we don't like Josh Rosen. Don't don't report it from me. But, you know, it's true. <laughs> but if the GM loves him and he's going to be the one with the ultimate decision, it might not mean anything. So it's the power structures of each building and what each building wants and what they need. I, I, a lot of these teams, the Patriots, for example, Bill Belichick never has to worry. If he mess, messes up this 23rd and 31st, he's good, right? But if you are the Jets, if you are, you know, some of these teams, the top 10, if you're the Colts, like, you got to kind of make the right pick. And there's a lot of pressure. And that's why sometimes the safer pick is made than the team that really wants to go for the home run. Okay. The guy that we're talking about five years from now, regardless of position, is who? Great question. I'm going to go out and live, and it's not fun, but as an NBC network, you guys can appreciate the Notre Dame love. Quentin Nelson yeah. is being discussed as a Hall of Famer, not a pro bowler, not an all pro, but he's an offensive guard, and I literally fell asleep saying his name. So <laughs> if you're an offensive guard, you're not getting the same hype, but they say he is the most surefire offensive line prospect since Zach Martin came out a couple years ago with the Cowboys. Where everyone's like, that's going to be a stud in the league. So if that's the case, and you know you're getting a Hall of Famer, but he doesn't touch the football ever, He's blocking for your quarterback and a running back. Like, where do you value that? What is the value of a Hall of Fame offensive guard? Yeah, but Peter, I, I have to start valuing these linemen because we value the edge rusher. Somebody has to block these guys. An interior offensive lineman. Well, I, I know, but as big as he is, why can't I make him a tackle? Sure. But but I've heard, you know, I told these guys when I came in one day after talking to this uh, you know, scout, and he said, you know, the guy who will be up on the boards and, you know, nobody, they're going to discount him because he's an offensive lineman is Quentin Nelson. Yeah. They said he is as he's one of those guys that you see once every 10 years that he's going to go in and he's going to be a great, great player. If they tell you, hey, you're going to get Steve Hutchinson. Yes. Right? You're going to get him. You would sign up for that. Wouldn't and, you? Would you at two overall? You know, what's the if value the of Giants, an offensive guard? I don't know. The, if you're the Giants. Yeah. You, I, if I give you a Hall of Fame you're, guard. You're signing right here. There's a Hall of Fame guard the next 15 seasons yes. he will play there. If I give you 10 seasons where you're all pro, would you sign up for that number two overall? I think you have to. <laughs> I don't know if these teams I, will. I don't know if they will, though. But they rarely take the best player, right? It's always quarterback. Sa Saquon Barkley, where does he rank best player in the draft? Everyone says number two behind Nelson or number one. Even, okay. You know? Where's he go? But but you can't tell me that you know running backs don't matter because they do. They if you're do. a really good Fournette, help Jackson. Absolutely, is he can really help the race? Yes. Here's the other thing: the quarterback. I don't know why I'm yelling at the you. quarter. I like this. The quarterback value is interesting, and I hate to get into the economics of it, but Kirk Cousins just signed for thirty million dollars, right? Marcus Mariota uh, in his fourth season is going to make six million a year. So in the new CBA since 2011, if you draft the quarterback yeah. in the first round, you get him for five years at a bargain basement price so there's a value to do that At, to take an offensive guard when you can get a quarterback for you know five cents on the dollar i don't know it, it does come down to you get five-year windows in the nfl that's really what Look it at is seattle right yes now. and Once they had to windows pay Russell, done. yeah it's done that's it uh and, and when you get that five-year window if you get that quarterback out of bargain who comes in and plays for you then you can spread the money around 
And if, if you strike gold, then you have an opportunity to play for the Super Bowl. Which is why I can't hate on what L.A. is doing. They see the window with Jared Goff. In two years, they have to renegotiate and give him probably $25 million at the bare minimum if he does everything right. We can't fit for it in. This is the window, not five years when he's at his best. This is the window in year three because we're paying him nothing. Does it worry you that you're bringing in a lot of personalities there with the Rams? A little bit. McVay's confident that he can handle this. And, you know, the coach and from the owner on down, he'll say, I will sacrifice personality and potentially chemistry issues for having the best talent on the field. We'll make it work. It's always great to see you. I love coming in. He's uh, Peter Schrager, NFL Network's Good Morning Football. They did not get nominated for a sports Emmy. No. But they did last year. And lost. Now, you said that you got nominated last year because of you. Yes. Okay. Uh, All right. All right. I haven't been featured enough. <laughs> <laughs> You can see him on uh, Good Morning Football, Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Eastern. He tries to get some airtime. Yeah. NFL Network providing live coverage of the draft from Dallas. Fox will simulcast NFL Network's coverage rounds one, two, and three. Peter Schrager, thank you, Pete. Thank you. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.